A rare look inside the secret world of the KKK. For those of you who think burning crosses and hooded rallies are relics of the civil rights era, think again. Hate groups in America have doubled in the past decade, and it may surprise you who's among their ranks and what their agenda is inside the new KKK. Fansman, lay a face. Forward, march. In a forest grove not far from the nation's capital. For God. For God. For country. For country. A group of men and women gather. For race. For race. For clan. For clan. As the light fades, they enact a ritual over a century old, but as fresh and searing as the flame they ignite. Clansmen, the fiery cross. A cross on fire. They are known as the Invisible Empire for a reason. They thrive in secrecy, almost never permitting outsiders access. Who are they? I could be your neighbor. You don't know who I am. You could think the world of me, but yet, if you see me in this hood and knew who I were, your whole thoughts could change. Uh, I've been a fireman. Uh, I've been in the Navy. The people wearing these robes walk among us. If you want to be in the Klan, fight for the Klan. I fight for it seven days a week. Witness the Ku Klux Klan this summer White power. White power. in Martinsville, White Virginia. Power. White power. White power. And in Tupelo, Mississippi, a couple of weeks ago, a similar scene. White White power. Power. Over the past four months, Nightline has been granted rare access to the resurgent Klan. Their rituals, their people, their message of racial segregation. If we do not protect our race and protect our people, they're going to destroy us. They're going to kill us. To get to the heart of it, we headed south to meet the grand dragon of the Mississippi White Knights of the KKK. The clavin made infamous in the film Mississippi Burning. You've already been told once, Nick. It's impossible not to think of what once happened here, the territory scarred by the battles of the civil rights era. A Klan bomb ripped apart Birmingham's 16th Street Baptist Church killing four children attending Bible class. So we're in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And just down here is the jail where Martin Luther King Jr. wrote the famous letter from a Birmingham jail. Along the way, we make a stop at the Southern Poverty Law Center, where Mark Potok and his colleagues have been fighting the KKK in courtrooms and classrooms for decades. Many of the Klan's people we've talked to say Barack Obama has been our single most effective recruiting tool in the last four or five years. Well, I think there's some truth to that. Uh, immediately after Obama was elected, uh, we saw two of the largest uh, hate websites in the country crash. Potok told us that by the late 80s, the Klan had dwindled to a few hundred. They now number closer to 6,000. He believes they can be very dangerous. Uh, is dangerous not so much because you know, a whole bunch of Klansmen get together in a room and plan to blow up a federal building uh, or to murder a thousand people with a bomb. So you know, it's these kind of lone wolf characters that get frustrated with their leaders that break away, you know, one day walk out of their house and start shooting. With that in mind, at a gas station outside of Tupelo, the Grand Dragon appeared. He is also known as Stephen Howard. 31 years old, he says he's an Iraq war veteran. He comes with a loaded pistol on his hip and tells me he's got serious PTSD. We agree to follow him to a remote location where cell phone service is spotty next to a trailer by the woods. They ask us not to photograph Howard's 11-year-old daughter, but she is there, as is his wife, Nicole, presiding over the food. Between eating and target practice, there's work to be done. Howard and his clan brothers are preparing this 16-foot cross. This is just the torches. We use the torches for the cross lightning itself. You have to wrap them and you have to put some white baling wire around them. Clansmen, behold the fiery cross. When we come back, the burning cross that's terrorized people for generations and the frightening message the clan is sending in the era of a black president. Barack Obama don't care about us. They don't care about America. The air reeks of kerosene. That's what we call it, clan cologne. 
We're at a KKK rally in the heart of Mississippi, a countryside still haunted by memories of lynchings and church bombings from decades ago. Pastor Wallace Hartsfield remembers those days only too well. He witnessed a black man dragged through the streets. They shot the man and they hanged him and then, then uh, used his body for target practice so as to teach black folk a lesson. This is what we're going to need some help at. But this is not the distant past. This is just last month in a secluded property in the woods where people have come to join the Grand Dragon Stephen Howard for what they call a cross lighting. America is at turmoil and we're lighting crosses to let people know that America is at turmoil right now. This Klansman, who asked we not show his face for fear he'd be fired from his job, starts to get ready for the evening's rituals. But you're wearing the robes of traditional terrorists, of traditional well, that's haters. Just, that's just the outlook that they want to give you. That ain't true. Not, not everybody was like that. So you think this is what a good Christian man does? Yeah, this is our Christianity. I mean, that's just plain and simple. Howard says he's allowed us to come here to show us the new Klan is neither hate-filled nor violent. Yet what we heard and saw during our time with them suggests otherwise. Black people and white people are nowhere related. In my opinion, I think black people evolved from animals. And I believe that we need to be separated. Whites and blacks need to be separated. I don't agree with race mixing. Let them set up their own state where they belong and give them their own homeland. And if your daughter, when she got older, came home and said, I want to go out with a black boy. I'd disown her. Wouldn't have nothing else to do with her for the rest of my life. Because of who she loved. No, it's not love. If you, if you love, you love somebody of your own race. Who decreed that? God decreed that. Jesus decreed that. I thought Jesus said love each other. The Jesus said love your neighbor, but if you read the Ask Bible. Ask yourself. You know, there's an argument to be made that by our covering the Ku Klux Klan, we play into their hand, we help them recruit. What, what do you make of that? Every time you have a story in the front page of the local newspaper about a Klan rally or something along those lines, uh, the Klan or that particular group does get a member or two. On the other hand, 99.9% .9 people who read about that are essentially inoculated against them. I think it's actually harming them more than it's helping them in the end. Back in Mississippi as nightfall, Steve and his wife Nicole tell us something stunning about Steve's 11-year-old daughter, who is here for all of the night's proceedings. Your 11-year-old daughter has a woman? Mm -hmm. She has a So she was eight. And she chose? She wanted it. But do you think at 11 she can understand? I think she understands Somewhat. more than my people. Children are very perspective. She I mean, has she, a beautiful robe. She, uh, she, she wants to be like her daddy. Uh, that's Roman. the first time I've actually, actually robed up, so it's a little bit big on me. <laughs> and now it's time for all members of the group to robe up. Where you at, Mom? Come right here, son. I'll get you. I've read in some of the literature that there are some people who think that if Barack Obama is reelected, the storm, something they call the storm, is going to come. Oh, it's going to happen. What's the storm? I fear it. War. And he's going to start it. He's going to start it. I, I fear it. I feel it. I feel it coming on. And, and it ain't just me. It's just, it, I, I, it's going it's to be another war in this, in, in, in this United States of America if he gets elected back to office. It's going to happen. If he gets four more years, Barack Obama will ruin this country and white people will be in concentration camps. And if you don't believe white people can't be in concentration camps, people sadly mistaken. And his solution to avoid this supposed impending storm is an all white South, where all blacks, Hispanics and Jews are banned, given someplace else, he says, to live in America. I want to make sure I understand you. If the goal is white separatism, mm -hmm. separating the races, mm -hmm. The only way to separate the races is using violence. You're not going to be able to just There's say nicely, if they, please if leave. They, if they will peacefully go, then yeah. But if they won't peacefully go, that's the only way is through violence. It's through making them go. That's it. And you'd be willing to be part of that. Mm -hmm. It's a race war you're talking about, mm -hmm. essentially. Very much so. His hero and predecessor was a convicted murderer and former head of the Mississippi White Knights. What do you think about Sam Bowers? He was the greatest Klansman that ever lived. Well, Sam Bowers was accused and convicted of murder. I don't endorse murder. What about other forms of violence? I don't endorse murder. I guess that means that other forms of violence may be okay. 
You have to form your own opinion on that. You stand right there. These words seem particularly ominous as the members line up, preparing to head into the woods to enact a tradition that has haunted the American consciousness for more than a century. Clansmen, do you accept the light? Yes, sir. The Grand Dragon, Stephen Howard, leads his fellow Klansmen in that notorious ceremony. Clansmen, do you accept the light? Yes, I do. Clansmen, do you accept the light? I accept this light. It is legal done here in the woods on private property. It is 10 years in federal prison if done on a black family's lawn to intimidate them. Klansmen, for Mississippi! For Mississippi! Klansmen, for America! Clansmen, behold the fiery cross, still brilliant. All the troubled history failed to quench its hollow flame. Let me say that the cross is an inspiration, a sign of the Christian, Christian religion, a symbol of faith, hope, and love. We do not burn but light the cross to signify that Christ is the light of the world. White power! White power! White power! As the fiery cross is reduced to a few sparking embers, the Clavern members leave the clearing and head back to the trailer. I just want to ask you one other thing about the gun. You have it with you all the time? Everywhere I go, concealed weapon. The U.S. government gave me that. I lost a lot of good friends of mine fighting for this country for nothing. For nothing. All because of the U.S. government. You're mad at the government. I'm very mad at the government. I mean, yeah, I do. I got a lot of hate in me. A lot of hate for, for nothing. I got a lot of built up in me. A lot of hurt. A lot of hurt. Pastor Hartsfield knows all about hurt. It hurts deeply, and I struggled for a long time not to hate those people that did that. Good will overcome evil. Right will overcome wrong. On this night, you can only hope the pastor's right. Get 